Hello and welcome back to another round of Bendability with me, M. Lewis, the Splits Wizard. This week on Bendability, we are discussing relax or relaxation or whatever you might want to term it. It's one of these terms that is, I don't know, as some of you know, you've probably heard of it, but maybe you have not actually experienced it or the experience of it is very uh, let's put it like nebulous when it can happen or not. So this week we are going to explore relaxation. We're actually going to have a slightly different format this week than what we normally do, where we're actually going to, I'm going to talk for a bit and talk a bit about the topic, but then at the end of the episode, I'm going to teach you all a nice guided relaxation based on the dissolution breathing method. So, uh, yeah, so it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be a nice little change up. Uh, yeah, but to get to it, a bit of housekeeping before we start. Uh, first off, uh, as some of you know, we're running a Kickstarter for our new online courses. Uh, we are 200% funded and about six days in or over 200% funded. So a massive thank you to everyone who has supported us on this. It is unreal the support we got. Also at the level people are getting, everyone seems to be getting the highest kind of tier. So thank you for that as well. I really, I really appreciate like kind of the show and confidence from the community that people are willing to throw that much money to us in a course that we're, you know, gonna take a couple of months for us to get out more so than anything else. So uh, thank you for that. Unfortunately, you've all forced me to be a desk slave now to uh, get writing and get, the, yeah, get writing. I've been able to like, basically once we got funded, I was able to immediately start going into, writing mode so uh, i've started writing all the manuals that's a lot of fun even though i hate writing i'm uh you know as you probably noticed i'm very distractible and like to ramble so uh yeah typing and sitting down to do it is a, a small challenge for me let's say but i will get it done for you because of your support so thank you so much uh, if you're listening to this in the future we have courses available on our website why don't you check them out uh, other than that just a big shout out we had three people go in uh, we put a, one like super high producer tier on the Kickstarter. We had three people go for that one. So for those three, three people, I won't name you because, you know, confidentiality and all that. A massive thank you for that. I'm, I, you know, I'm chuffed that someone would because we put it in going like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe someone might or maybe it was, it was a bit of a joke more than anything else. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for that. I'm, I'm ecstatic, really. You can tell by my face. <laughs> anyway. If you're not, uh, if you're just listening to this, my face was very ecstatic at that moment. If you're watching on YouTube, you know the truth. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, just another shout out, a big shout out to my Icelandic listeners. So uh, I don't know if anyone knows anything about podcast charts and stuff like that, but uh, normally I am in the fitness categories where we have this podcast and sometimes you know, that would include sort of more fitness and fitness practical and strength training podcasts. And then you have health and fitness, which is uh, more biohackers, I suppose, <laughs> more so than anything else. And then you have the general podcast charts for like the whole, every sort of type of podcast. And I managed to get in, thanks to the Icelandic listeners, to the Icelandic Top 250 podcast. So uh, of all the podcasts, so uh, thank you so much. If you're in Iceland and you're listening and you write me a review in Icelandic, I will attempt to read it out in Icelandic. Next thing, as I kind of, as a bit of fun. I think I can because the Irish language, oddly enough, I spotted this one is over there a few times. We have a lot of very, we don't have the same letter system they use in Iceland, but a lot of the way the words sound and kind of come out of the mouth are quite simple, or it's not simple, simple for an Irish language speaker because they're very similar. So it's kind of interesting. Obviously, in Ireland, we have a big Viking kind of influence to our country, which, you know, Vikings and, you know, Norse and Anglo and you know, all this kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, I will attempt to do that, possibly with a bit of help from my friend, Dr. Helgi. But, uh, yeah, it'll be a bit of fun for anyone does it. Uh, anyway, on another serious note, hit me up with some reviews. Uh, I'd love to get some more of them. I'd love to read them out, get your feedback. It's always great. It keeps me motivated. So uh, if you want to jump on and give me a review, please do. Other than that, let's just uh, quit the rambling and get to the podcast. So relaxation is this kind of thing that we're, we're always told, just relax, relax, relax. 
And you know, if you have a, if you have say, a partner or a coworker or something, you probably find like, never in the history of telling someone to calm down, will they ever calm down when they're slightly agitated. And this kind of goes the same in relaxation. You can probably imagine, you know, I like to do it a little bit to wind my partner up when we're agitated or having something and telling her to calm down and it never calms her down. And, you know, I say it to my dog as well and he never calms down. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have been told, calm down and it will not calm you down. It's the exact same thing in relax because it's kind of funny when we think about it, like relax is a command and a command makes people stand at attention and kind of jump into this kind of do something activity, which is almost the reverse of what we want in relaxation. So by telling someone or even telling yourself, relax, relax, it's just not really going to work in some way. So we need to actually get some concrete techniques on how to relax. And obviously, you know, I'm talking generally here, but obviously I will want you to kind of extrapolate what I'm talking about to our more stressful positions, which a flexibility position could be stressful for you, and learn to kind of release and relax into it. So I like the term release. And it's kind of one of these things that like, we have to, we have to have a way of coaching relaxation as a first stage. It has to be kind of like, okay, we're gonna coach you to relax. We're gonna, it's a skill. This is one of the things I've learned from Kit Lachlan is, relaxation is a skill and that you can practice it. And if you practice it more and more, you get better and better at doing it. So thank you, Kit, for that kind of advice because that was a, a big light bulb moment for me. That, Hold on, this is actually a trainable skill. Much like we can train the skill of our flexibility positions or skill training, whatever we're doing, we can actually practice relaxation if we have a methodology and then we'll get more relaxed. So it's kind of one of these ways that we have to also have like, how can we actually tell we're relaxed? And I find that kind of an interesting one as well. So one of the ways that we can do it is we can start looking for biofeedback. So we can start taking feedback from what's going on in our body. And this could be very simple, like, okay, let's just say you have a fancy heart rate monitor, you have a heart rate mount watch or you know, something I can tell your heart rate and you're doing your stretching with the goal of relaxing and you're checking your heart rate, it's 140 BPM, it goes up to 150. Well, we can say you're probably not relaxing in that situation. So we could kind of use our heart rate to tell us if we're actually achieving the goal of relaxing. And that one I find is very accessible to people because we have so many devices available to us nowadays that we can actually go, okay, I'm going to do relaxed stretching, I'll get out my heart rate monitor, and I'll see if I'm actually relaxed in these positions. And a lot of the time, you're not. And it's very, like, it can be very noble in terms of these goals when we're like, oh, let's, let's relax. But we're in, like, a loud gym. There's noises going on. There's people running around in very little clothing that is very exciting to our eyes. And you know, these things will raise your heart rate and your blood pressure, so you might not actually be relaxing. Whereas if we have the heart rate monitor, we can actually tell, oh, maybe it's just not working. Maybe it is, and you know, it could be like, oh, it's going down a little bit and it's calming down after a workout. Okay, that's good, that's good. But maybe if you're doing your training at home for your relaxed type of stretching, which I think is obviously very beneficial, I think relaxed stretching when we're just hanging out in position and aiming to relax in it is kind of, it's the Ouroboros of stretching that we start here and we, we're trying to relax and we get used to the positions, we get used to relaxing and releasing in them. And then we go all on this amazing journey into the underworld. It's like the hero's journey of Campbell, into the un hero's underworld. We meet our dark mentor, we pass through the dark night, we learn isometrics and hard techniques and contractions and blah, and cramping and all this stuff. And then we eventually fight the dragon and we come back around and we're just back into relaxed positioning and it's just different. And that's the kind of thing that we want is like, oh, we have applied all these techniques, but we really want to be able to go back to these positions and just be able to relax and have them as a rest position. Because if it is a position that is for me to do is incredibly easy, then the training that comes from it will have no parasitic tension in it, detracting from the range of motion I'm training in. And you could think like, 
you know, oh, I'm doing bench press, but I have to really pull my arms back as hard as I can to get a touch and get a contact. Whereas if I can just lower the bar and just straight to the chest and blast up, then if I need to use my upper back and lats to lock myself in the position, they're just doing that function. They're not also performing like the shortening side of the joint of the pecs. So we have this idea that if we can be relaxed in our starting positions for our exercises, then we can, the tension we layer on will be going towards the objective of the exercise and not the, and not fighting against the body. So we're always going with, not against, or that's our goal. So this is one of the goals we're looking at relaxed is like, we need to know when we're actually relaxed. So we're using heart rate as one way of tracking this. Another way of tracking this is that our breathing can get deeper. And this one can be slightly subjective. It's like, oh, am I, am I forcing a deep breath? And this is, this is one of the, the problems with using breath work is that we can force all these cool breathing techniques, but they should really be happening naturally. So generally what we want to see when we are relaxing is that our exhale is coming out slower. Uh, we could think of this as like a way of measuring body tension, like general body tension or resistance to expansion, where if I expand uh, my, I hold, I, if I expand my body is very tense, then the cylinder, the balloon of the body that I fill up will have a lot of tension and it'll squeeze the air out very quickly, or I might even force it out. Now, there can be a misunderstanding I feel in this where you see these kind of, you see these clever breathing cycles where they're very useful and they can be, they can work, don't get me wrong, and you can get a lot of benefit from them, but a lot of time they can be forced. So instead of breathing in, or instead of breathing out, and say I want to do a seven second in exhale because that is proven to be the most parasympathetic exhale. Well, I can literally hold my body tense and not allow it to deflate. Whereas if I was very relaxed because the body tension and the, the balloon has got less stretchy, so it's pressure on the air to push it out through the hole in the balloon has gotten lower and it's taking longer for the air to come out. So there's two differences there and it can be very, you know, we can read a lot of this kind of the science of breathing and the other stuff where they'll measure people who are relaxed or get them relaxed and they go, oh, they're breathing out longer. But are they holding the exhale or forcing the exhale to be slow or is it actually slow? So this is one of the things you can track is like how much tension do I have in my exhale? Am I exhaling longer and is it happening naturally? And that is what we want. We want this like natural long exhales. And I've done like, I've done a huge amount of breath work over the years, like decades of this shit now. And what I have found myself is that when I can key into these states that a breath cycle might get up to taking me two minutes where I'm just like, I'm inhaling, that might take 30 seconds. There's a 10, 15 second pause. And then the exhale takes a minute but I'm not holding it. It's just kind of like the air is falling out of me. And it's just because I've gotten into this state that allows this to happen. That does not happen immediately. It takes some time to work up to. And working up is almost the wrong word there because I'm not working up to it. I'm just letting it unfold and letting it happen. So this, you know, this could, this is a process that will take a while. So one of the things we can do to kind of understand this process and begin to gain the biofeedback is start to observe the breathing when we are doing this and we can start counting the breathing and the reason we count is we get this chance just to take over that little voice that speaks to you in your head and if we give it something to count it'll shut it up for a moment so uh, i think a lot of uh, meditation techniques or meditation schools i can't remember from it maybe it's buddhism they call this giving the monkey a banana because the mind is you know uh, the mind is compared to a wild monkey jumping around, jumping from branch to branch and robbing bananas and tourists and stuff like this. And then by giving the monkey a banana, it sits down and eats the banana for a bit. So by giving your brain something to count, it'll shut up this shopping list, dialogue, planification, what am I doing next? These fantasy situations have like, oh shit, I should have said this when that person said that, I would have sounded smart. It'll shut that up for a moment. So we can count the breeding cycle as a way of tracking it. 
Uh, we can also just note that there is the there's five steps to the reading cycle. Most people say there's four. There's actually five. Bear with me on this one. So we have our inhale, our retaining the end of the inhale, the midpoint between the inhale and the exhale, the retaining the start of the exhale, the exhale itself, and then the two retentions the other side. Now, it's that kind of counting where we're like, oh, am I retaining the start of the exhale or the end of the exhale, or am I retaining the start of the inhale? So normal in breathwork cycling, and people go, oh, there's the inhale, the retention, the exhale, the retention, and the emptiness. Whereas by adding this clear midpoint between the inhale and the exhale, now we can think of this like a pendulum swinging, that my pendulum swing, if I was just going in, out, in, out, no exhales, there's a moment when the pendulum stops and then it starts to go the other side. So it swings from side to side, it goes up, stop, to the other side, stop, other side. Now the retention, it's like, am I, if I think of my exhale is swinging or being pushed, am I holding it upwards or am I holding it from dropping down? And that's one way to think about our inhale, in retaining the inhales or the exhales. But at that still point in the pendulum, there's a kind of gate that happens. And finding that gate will allow you to kind of, I don't know, some school of meditation was key. It's a moment of non-duality. It's a moment, it's a gate into it. It's not the moment itself, but it's a gate where you can find a clear, clear pause where everything will stop and go away. And being aware of our breathing cycle and just counting this will help us find it. So you can imagine I'm counting like in, two, three, four, pause, two, three, exhale, two, three, four, retain, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. So we're counting this. And then if we are relaxing properly, we'll find naturally of its own accord and just by kind of focusing on the breath, we can think that it will start getting longer. We can just expand our counts. So our inhale might be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, pause, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's what we're looking for in this relaxation process is that the, the breath cycle itself, the whole total time it takes me to take a breath gets longer and that the exhale starts to get longer than the inhale count. Now you don't have to be precise on this count. As long as you kind of have your own inherent rhythm in this, and then we can just work with that. It doesn't have to be timing it in seconds, timing it in heartbeats, whatever. Just find the rhythm of counting that works for you and stick with it. Don't overcomplicate it. So this is one of the one of the other ways of tracking is a relaxation actually working. If I still find them going in two three out two three in two three out two three in two three hold 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 tense 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 then we're probably not relaxing. So this is a very clear way of marking this relaxation process. The other kind of way we can think about in relaxation is if we have fight and flight and we have rest and digest. For some people, this one, this one doesn't really work too well for me, but it works well for other people, is that your mouth will start to get moister or fill with saliva. And this is one way to actually see if you're relaxing. If it works for you, it's one of these very useful ways. You're doing a relaxation process and you find, oh, I've got a big mouthful of saliva and I have to swallow it, or my mouth was dry and now it's moist. And this is another way that you could just notice this, that like, okay, I've got this. I've got this relaxation happening and my mouth is constantly filling up with saliva and I have to swallow it. Uh, you know, that goes in. You see this in a lot of like Nadan internal alchemy practices in some schools have been having this idea of swallowing spit where it's like okay you're making the jade fluid you know your spit actually isn't the jade fluid that's another topic but they would term it that and they say swallow spit uh, and it's one of the ways they have of tracking the relaxation or maybe forcing it to happen so we have these kind of three cool ways of tracking our relaxation now, there is a, another way, and we're gonna look at this when we're doing our dissolution breathing practice, where we can use the tangible feeling of the body getting heavier into the ground or into our contact points as a way of 
knowing if we've reduced overall holding muscle tension. And it's kind of nice because we can actually relate this to acrobatic practice, where we have this concept in acrobatics, where particularly in partner work, but it does relate to other stuff as well, of like if someone can hold themselves, and it means they can generate the right amount of tension that they feel lighter. And it's kind of this kind of the comparison for an acrobatic practice is if someone can hold themselves correctly, say you're doing hand to hand or aerial trapeze or whatever, and someone can hold themselves, they feel lighter. And it's just like, say, if I'm trying to balance a stick, oh, it's really easy. Whereas if I get a wet noodle or a pillow, suddenly, even if it's the same weight as a stick, it's very difficult to balance it. Um, this idea can apply to it. And I can remember myself actually from one of a, from circus school or wherever, fly, I, was, I catch on flying trapeze is one of the things I can do, where I'm the person, the person will fly off the trapeze onto and I catch them and it's, you can get all the glory because you're just the dead weight on the end of a rope. But I can remember very clearly that one of the coaches that I had who'd been doing flying trapeze for a very long time, she's a very good acrobat, very skilled, very talented, had been doing gymnastics all her life and transferred over to the circus and was very good. Now, she weighed about 75, 76 kilos. She was quite big, quite muscly uh, for an acrobat, but she's very, very good. And when I was catching her on flying trapeze, she was the lightest flyer I'd have in terms of sensation I'm working with. Whereas girls who might've been, let's say 55, 60 kilos, were just like, you know, bag, I don't say bag of potatoes, but like that kind of feel like feeling like a sack to move around where she just was like light and in timing. And she was cause she had just had this very like tense body. Like you kind of, you'd look at her and you'd be like, you know, has that kind of like classic Instagram, always, always held look. And obviously it was quite tense. And uh, you but it worked great for acrobatics, but we want to have the reverse. We want to have literally our flesh hanging off our bones and our bones floating on top of it. And to do this, what we're going to look at in our dissolution breathing practice is this tangible feeling of getting heavier, that we're pressing more into the ground, that we're releasing downwards, that our organs are pressing our spine into the ground, this idea. And this kind of heaviness is very easy to kind of feel once you once you feel it once in a very easy to feel situation which we're going to do in our practice later on in the podcast then you can find it in the stretching positions and this is where things get interesting because if i can make myself heavy via this kind of release of body tension and like kind of squish i'm trying to turn the body from stick to sack of water is one way to think about it and this kind of idea of yeah this kind of idea of getting heavier through the contact points, through what you can feel, can translate to our stretching positions where I was like, oh, I'm in a kneeling lunge hip flexor position and my knee is on the ground and I can just like focus on the sensation of getting heavier through the knee and more going through it. Or I'm doing a supported side split and I put the supports in my knee or my knees or my quads, wherever. And I can just feel that they're like, squishing into them more and instead of like you know my muscles being tense and kind of floating on a point they're kind of squishing and conforming to the surface underneath it and this is a very cool way to uh to know we're relaxing know we're releasing i like the term releasing here because we're releasing the tension that we're used to holding we're letting it go and we want to let it go like a hot potato just gone um, but like a lot of time we don't actually know we've been holding this hot potato we're holding it, but then when you realize you're holding it, you can let it go. So it's this idea we're looking for in these relaxation, and this can apply to any position. Now, when we talk about like doing flexibility positions in a relaxed manner, one of the key things we want to be is incredibly well supported in the positions. This is crucial for that if we're, if we have like body parts floating in space, and they're not supported by anything, even if it's just a light contact point, the kind of intrinsic need for the body to stabilize itself and balance itself in space will kick in, and this will give us more tension than we want. And you know, a very simple way to feel this yourself is to do a forward fold, and just you know fold your arms up so they're not in contact with the ground, and just see what you feel. And then 
take your hands away and then put your fingertips really lightly in contact with the ground. Just really light contact so they're not su supported. And then just you want to notice as you have this contact and your balance has been stabilized by the hands, suddenly you'll be able to release and let more of the weight of the torso just hang into the position. Now, obviously, you know, we could take weight out of this position and just allow us to, uh, allow us to, you know, be more supported. But even this just gentle support with the fingertips will allow us to feel this kind of relaxation. Now, to modify any kind of flexibility position to perform this kind of relaxation in, or to allow us, we're gonna need like some bolsters or some cushions or some foam bricks or, you know, any of these kind of things we have that we can put weight into. And the goal of this kind of relaxed release stretching will be to get into a sub maximal stretch, but still feels like that you are under a stretching kind of loading type sensation in the right vector. And then as you relax more and release more, more of the weight will transfer into the support. At the same time, you want to be not balancing. It could be not that it's impossible, but it could be very difficult to be doing, say, a suspended side splits and you're trying to relax because you're going to be wobbling backwards and forwards and trying to keep the balance. And every time you breathe, that will shift your balance around. Then, you know, it's just not going to be easy. Whereas if we are in a more supported position, if we're in a side split and we have some supports at the knees or some bolsters on the knees or at the crotch, we have our fingertips in contact with the ground. It's easy to place the hands there. It's no real struggle then you might actually be able to relax more in this position. So we have to think about it like whenever we're doing this kind of relaxed stretching, that our goal should be to relax and release tension and get comfortable in the positions, as opposed to when we're trying to get deeper or develop the range of motion, then we're trying to push the depth and maybe push the tension we might be using to achieve this. So it is kind of slightly paradoxical in our aims that we're not trying to get deeper. We will get deeper, but we want to get deeper via this mechanism of relaxing and this relaxation response and that we're not fighting ourselves. We're just allowing the body to kind of express its range of motion. The other kind of thing we want to think about is we want these positions to be comfortable because if we, if you really want to relax, like relaxation, as I said, is a skill, it could take, you know, 10 minutes to relax into a position, to really relax into it. Now, obviously, if you're doing fancy techniques, contract, relax, and whatever, then we can, you know, get in there quickly, but we might not be relaxed. We're building up tension versus getting rid of tension. So this is a kind of subtractive process versus an additive process. So we want to have this idea, we're incredibly well supported, we're balanced, we're not gonna fall out, there's no loud noises, there's no people in, attractive people walking around and you're not loud music this is the kind of thing music will hijack your heart rate as well so the louder the heart the music the harder it is to actually relax because your body will go in response to the beat so if you're playing slayer or burzum you know if you're me you can relax under it because you know let's face it i like slayer and burzum but if you know if that's not your style of music, it's probably not gonna help you relax and probably make you tenser. And the same thing, even if you're listening to classical or pop music, if it's upbeat or other stuff, you know, you might wanna change onto your Adele or something like this, or just play something very slow and soothing, you know, crack out the whale sounds or whale calls and stuff like that, you know, or just have no music. You know, it is, you know, there is this idea of like, when we're learning to relax, making it very nice, making it kind of making things nice having nice music and not harsh lighting and being comfortable and soothing and what you're doing is you're basically stripping the environmental stressors out that might cause an anti-relaxation response a stress response it's called anti-relaxation sounds cooler and what we really want is this we want to basically remove them first and then we want to try find the things that are relaxing to us or helpful for us this could be you know this is the thing when you're learning to relax you want to stack the deck in your favor if that means getting the nice incense get some nice incense if that means you know 
having buying some special cushions because they're your relaxation cushions or a lucky red jumper that's nice or a nice blanket to keep yourself warm do it why not you know make it useful and good for yourself and that's what we're looking for so we're gonna sort of segue into our practice today where no actually we're not i'm going to talk about one further technique and this is what we call in the modern methods of mobility the contract relax and dissolve or the crd technique the contract relax and dissolve is a way of applying the dissolution breathing which we're going to explore in our practice where we will perform a few rounds of contract relax and uh, as you know, I talked about this before in the contract relax kind of, I can't remember what episode it was in, but it was in one of them, where we want to use the least amount of tension possible to do our contractions. And that still gets us to this reduction of resistance stretching and go a bit deeper. We'll perform as many rounds of that as we feel we want. And then when we're in the position, we're going to go and scan the body and find what is holding tension or not, or find even going into the joints is quite useful in this and then trying to apply the dissolution to this area. When we're doing the dissolution breathing, we have this idea of like, we want the whole body to get bigger. I've spoken on this before. We breathe in, the whole body inflates, and then we let it out, but we just let it come out. We don't force it out. We don't try and let it come out slow. It comes out whatever speed it wants, and hopefully it gets slower after a few rounds of this. And then we should be looking on each round of the dissolution to get heavier to feel more squish of the muscles and to get this idea going on that we're like heavy sink release so this is one way of applying it directly to your flexibility training and obviously if you get skilled at the dissolution which we're going to work on in a gentler less stressful less extended position then once we have the idea and how it feels we can replicate the feeling sensation and what works for us in the dissolution. So this is one of the things we're actually going to start looking at now as we segue into our technique. So to set up for a dissolution breathing session, we are going to, you know, breathing is probably wrong, a dissolution tension session. I call it the breathing because we use the breathing to trigger it, but eventually as you get better at it, you can do it without the breathing. It signs up with the breathing. It can be done even counter in breathing. I can release tension on an inhale and stay static on an exhale or increase tension. So mm, there's ways of doing this. This is the easiest way to learn it, but eventually we want to get skilled enough just to do it whenever we want. So we're going to segue into our practice today. And our practice for the dissolution breathing is, uh, this will be marked on the YouTube as well. If you go back to YouTube, you can find the timestamp for it. It'll probably be the same on the podcast. So if you want to go back to the podcast and do this practice multiple times, awesome. Uh, if you're really into it and it's working, for, just let me know if you enjoy it. If so, I'll just edit it out into a standalone practice and just put up as a bonus episode of the podcast. Uh, if not, then suck it. Uh, anyway, so to do the dissolution breathing, we're going to do it lying down on the floor. We want to be comfortable on the floor. So you want to make sure that one, first off, you're warm, that you're warm on the floor, that you have either a carpeted floor is quite nice, a mat, some, a duvet, get a duvet off a double bed and fold it in half. So there's quite like there's a bit of insulation underneath you and that there's kind of a surface that isn't just hard cold wood or cold stone though if you have under high under floor heating maybe that would be awesome i don't know i'm not under floor heating so i can't tell you but i assume it would be uh, then you also kind of want to make sure you are warm as well so having a blanket or a scarf or you know something you can drape over yourself you know it doesn't take a lot to stay to stay warm in this because ideally as we relax we will get warmer on the air the peripheral edges of the body will get warmer so generally that's what we're looking for so if you find yourself getting super cold during this do layer up do you know put a duvet the only risk of getting too comfortable and too warm particularly with a duvet and other stuff is that we might fall asleep now if you fall asleep during the practice, that's okay. Just have a power nap. That's fine. That's pretty good. It means you've been so relaxed, you'll fall asleep. 
if it's probably not in the exact point of the practice what we are doing, but you know, I wouldn't beat myself up if I fell asleep from relaxing, put it that way. At the same time, we do want to make sure we're warm. So you have to find the balance what works for you. And you know, depending on your climate, aircon, or whatever you have going on in your house, you know, figure out what works for you. We want to be not wearing tight clothing. So I want you to ditch the yoga pants, ditch the under armor, ditch the tight muscle tops, you know, whatever you're wearing, take them off. You know, do it naked, get some shorts and a t-shirt on. Uh, for the ladies listening to the podcast, just, you know, if you're wearing a bra, particularly sports bras that have a very strong elastic, uh, what's it called, band, elastic band or the underwear, uh, you know, loosen the band, take it off if you can, you know, these kind of things, just basically because it's one of the things that will restrict this expansion of the body, that having that elastic around it. So do watch out for that. But as I said, like, you know, t-shirt and like shorts, it's great for this, that kind of thing. Just be, you know, that, your pajamas, have a onesie. It's, you know, it's almost Christmas. Is it almost Christmas? It's not almost Christmas. It's winter time here. So, you know, you know, throw on your onesie, whatever, light a fire, whatever. Make this space nice as well. So what this means is dim the lights, but don't make it too dark because once again, you might fall asleep and we don't want that to happen, though we don't mind if it does. Uh, get, you know, get some mood lighting, some side lights, your nano lights, your nano leaf, whatever they are, set them onto a nice cool purple. Cool. Uh, set your fire going, all this stuff. You know, make sure there's no lights shining in your face basically is what you want. Though I will say this, like some of the best dissolution sessions I've had have been outside on a picnic blanket. So don't be afraid to combine like this with a bit of tanning if you're, if you've got the climate for it. Uh, but you know, let's get yourself comfortable. So you first want to now lie down on your back. You want to initially scan for discomfort. Uh, what I mean here is you want to make sure, you know, do I feel supported? Like maybe you want to get some towels or some cushions and put them at the back of the knees. Maybe you feel your neck is hanging up because you've got a massively thick spine and back and your head's hanging up and you might want to get something like a book, a couple of centimeters, a rolled up towel and put that at the back of the neck and the back of the head at the occiput foot to support that. With the hands, generally we want them out to the side and turned palms facing up with the fingers kind of relaxed but not curled up. You might want to do with the fingers because we, we have a tendency to kind of have claw hands all the time. So we want to make sure our hand, fingers are kind of straight just to give. That's the only bit of sort of held tension we want in this. So we're going to check in now. We're going to make sure, you know, is the space comfortable? Is that good for me? Does that work? Is the lighting nice? Have I put on some music? And you now you're going to set your phone. This is just so in case you fall asleep. So the dissolution practice I lead you through is probably going to be about 10 minutes long, 10, 12 minutes. And we're going to look at scanning and then releasing the body. I'm going to adopt a relaxing tone of voice. I hope my tone of voice is relaxing for you. Uh, I'll try and keep the jokes to a very minimum. And yeah, then we're going to test our position. Have a little test. Is it good? Does it work for us? Are we set? Okay, if not, you know, pause and adjust your position. Get ready. Make sure your timer is set for 20 minutes just in case you fall asleep. And we're going to begin. The dissolution practice begins now. I want you to start the dissolution by mentally scanning the body. You're going to start at the left leg and I want you to be as precise as possible as you're going from the foot all the way up the leg. Take your time and go feel each toe individually. Start to feel the sole of the foot.
start to feel in the top of the foot. Move on to the ankle. Feel the whole surrounding of the ankle. Feel inside the joint. Feel where the heel is in contact with the floor. Move on to the calf. Feel the calf muscle. Feel the difference between the Achilles tendon and the calf. Get them clear. Feel the calf pressing into the ground and feel the shin bone. Feel the shin bone pressing its weight into the calf. Feel the front of the shin, the muscles along there. Take your time. Feel the knee joint. Try to feel inside the knee joint. Try to feel the difference between the patella and what lies underneath it. Feel the two tendons going around the patella. Feel the difference between the tibia and fibia on top of those bones and the start of the femur. Move on to the quadricep and feel the front of the thigh. Scan sequentially going from the kneecap all the way up to the groin. Taking your time and just feeling what is going on in there. Try to feel the different muscles. Try to feel your leg hair. Feel the hamstring. Feel if it's in contact with the ground. Feel the weight of the hamstring. Feel the weight of the hamstrings hanging off the femurs. Feel the femur itself. Can you feel the shape of the femur? from the kneecap all the way to the groin. Shift your focus now to the right leg and go to the right foot and start with the big toe. Feel the big toe. Start to feel the other toes. Ask yourself the question, can I feel every toe individually without moving them? Or is it kind of just a unit of toes? See if you can make this sensation clearer without moving the toes. Feel the arch of the foot. Feel the shape of the arch. See if it's holding tension, if it's tight, if it feels springy, if it's fatigued from your day-to-day -day activities. Feel 
feel the right ankle. Feel the difference between the front of the ankle and the back of the ankle. Feel the weight of the heel pressing into the floor. Feel the calves of the lower leg. Feel them pressing into the floor. See if you can bring clarity to the feeling difference of the tendons, the Achilles tendon of the lower leg and the calf muscles themselves. Feel them pressing and hanging off the shin bone. Feel the flatness and the pointiness of the shin bone. See if you can feel the whole length of the shin bone. See if you can scan from ankle to knee. Feel the tibialis anterior, the muscles on the front of the shin. See what they feel like. Compare this feeling to the calf muscles. Is it the same or is it different? Can you feel the tibia hanging from the bones of the shin? Feel the knee joint. See what you noticed this time around, informed by what you have done in the last section. Compare the knee joints side to side. Feel your left knee, see what you feel, and then feel the right knee and see how it's different. Feel the space inside the knee joint. Start to feel the quadriceps. Feel the weight of these muscles pressing down and hanging off the bones. Feel the hamstrings hanging off the femur. Feel the femur itself inside these muscles. See how clear you can make this feeling. We're now going to start the dissolution breathing. We will go back to the feeling of the left heel on the floor. I want you to breathe in, nice, gentle, even inhale at your own pace. Then focus on this feeling of the heel on the floor and exhale, feel it get heavier. Feel it press into the ground. Keep working the breathing at your own pace, focusing on this relaxed sinking of the heel getting heavier and heavier on each outbreath. Move to the right heel. Focus only on the right heel. Feel its weight. Feel the pressure of the right heel into the ground. Inhale at your own pace, then exhale and let this heaviness manifest let it just go into the ground give the weight to the floor move to the calf muscles of the left leg 
feel them hanging from the bone feel them becoming gelatinous into the floor breathe in at your own pace exhale let them hang and sink further feel the calves of the right leg feel the calf muscles hanging from the shins at your own pace inhale just exhale and just let that heaviness increase let yourself just give the weight to the floor let it all go shift your focus to the left thigh feel the muscles in contact with the floor underneath you feel their heaviness feel the weight of the leg inhale exhale give the weight into the floor keep repeating the inhale and exhale feel the left leg just getting heavier just giving it all into the floor and don't allow it to not shift your focus to the right thigh inhale then exhale at your own pace and feel the same heaviness just going into the floor pulled straight down to the center of the earth inhale exhale just allow the weight to go down into the floor feel the bone squashing the thigh feel the muscles turning gelatinous keep repeating the breathing shift from leg to leg and make it heavier I want you now to ask yourself a question is my leg feeling heavier or am I actively trying to push it into the floor to make it feel heavier if you're actively pushing it into the floor see the muscles that are doing this and make them stop let them get heavy too if it is heavy just keep going with the breathing We'll now shift our focus to the back of the head. Feel the back of the head. Feel it pressing into the ground. Feel the muscles of the back of the neck relaxing. Feel it all just going down. Inhale exhale let the weight of the head go to the ground it's very heavy just stop holding it shift the focus now to the jaw feel the back of the jaw or the masseter muscles feel the left side and now feel the right side take a moment to compare tension either side of the jaw inhale exhale and just let the jaw get heavier and feel the weight of the jaw pressing down onto the back of the head Feel the muscles at the back of the left eye. Now 
make them as clear as you can but try to keep the eye still and not moving breathe in and exhale at your own pace and let the left eyeball get heavier and heavier shift your focus to the right eyeball feel the back of the eyeball with as much clarity as possible inhale and exhale at your own pace letting the weight of the eye press down down onto the back of the head feel the center of the forehead feel the weight of the front of the skull inhale and exhale at your own pace and feel the weight and all the muscles just let go and that point at the back of the skull get heavier and heavier on the left side of the front of the neck focus on them inhale and exhale at your own pace and just let it go let the weight and the tension go into the floor inhale exhale Shift your focus to the right side. Inhale and exhale at your own pace and just let the weight of the front of the neck press down on the back of the head. Inhale and feel the whole totality of the head exhale just let it all go into the ground shift our focus to the area of the shoulder blades in contact with the ground Feel the contact point. Inhale, exhale, and let the whole torso spread on the exhale. Let it dissolve. Shift your focus now to the sternum, the front of the chest. Inhale and exhale a few times at your own pace and feel its weight pressing down on the exhale. When you have this sensation, let the weight go and let it get heavier and heavier on each exhale. Feel the left pec muscles. Inhale, exhale, let them go into the floor and let the weight of the whole shoulder just go into the floor. 
Inhale, exhale, let it go. Get heavier and heavier. Inhale and feel the right chest. Feel its weight. Inhale and exhale in your own time. And just let that get heavier and heavier. Feel the whole totality of the chest and back. Inhale and exhale. Just let the whole back and the weight of the chest go down through the back. I want you to take a moment to check in with the legs and the head at your own time and if they become tense again just breathe in and breathe out and get heavier get heavier and heavier now to focus on the abdomen start focusing in that area halfway between the pubic bone and the belly button feel it rise and fall on your in and out breath feel it get heavier on the out breath when you have the sensation let it get heavier and heavier Move up halfway between the sternum and the belly button. Feel it rise and feel it fall. Feel the heaviness of the spine from the weight pressing down. Inhale and exhale at your own time and make it get heavier. Just let it go. Now, focus on the totality of the sensation of the back pressing into the ground. Inhale, feel the front of the body, the whole front. Exhale, let the whole weight go. Feel the muscles hanging off the body. Inhale, exhale, get heavier. round 
exhale and feel which bit of the body doesn't get heavier do my legs get heavy but not my torso does my head get heavy but not my legs focus on what doesn't get heavy and on the next exhale make it get heavier allow it just to give the weight to the floor trust the floor is there and just go into it inhale front of that body part exhale feel the contact with the floor and get heavier and heavier keep repeating this heavy sinking releasing feel the weight feel your weight pressing you into the floor Take a moment, open your eyes and start to wriggle the fingers and toes. Gently, very gently, with the least amount of effort, roll onto your side at your own time and come up the sitting. This ends the dissolution practice for today. So, I hope you all enjoyed that practice. I know I did, even though I was sitting in my chair here talking. Uh, other than that, I'm going to wrap up in a gentle manner to let you have a chance to uh, notice what you notice and sense what you sense. Other than that, this has been a round of bendability by me, Emmett Lewis, the Splits Wizard, and we will see you next week.